Welcome to Morning Manor's Week in Review with Pastor Steve Mary. A summary of this week's Morning Manor. What are you willing to surrender to God? What do you have? What is available to you at your disposal, in your possession? This rod was nothing special of itself. It was just a rod, a stick. What was significant about the stick was, it was what Moses had. No, God did not ask Moses what he didn't have. We could all make a long list of things we don't have. We don't have enough money, we don't have a good education, we don't have a good high social standing, and the list goes on and on. I believe many of God's people have been defeated in life because we have allowed the enemy to cause us to despise our gift or our talent. Like the servant who went out and buried his one talent, many have buried their talents because it seemed so weak, so small, so insignificant. <laughs> Look what God did with a stick. The Holy Ghost is saying to you today, it is time to take the harp of the wither tree, dig up the hidden talent, and put it in the master's hand. My question to you today, what do you have that you're willing to surrender to God? The thought of the day, little is much when God is in it. Prove your sorry. Here's how to get good with God and those we have offended or hurt. The Word of God provides for us ways to redeem ourselves both with God and man. Being people of carnal nature and fleshly desires, we sometimes fall into the pit of sin. Not to give occasion to the flesh, but we should become stronger spiritually. Immaturity, selfishness, impatience will stunt your spiritual growth and progress. It will also keep you from receiving the blessings of the Lord. God is gracious. He gave you a space to repent. My advice to you, use it wisely. Yes, saying I'm sorry sometimes become a bit hard. But you have to bear in mind that to the same measure that we meet out, the same will be measured to us. It's not only about telling somebody that you're sorry, but you've got to mean it from your heart and be willing to go the extra mile and let them know. If you're sorry, prove it. The thought of the day, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Eight Steps to Restoration when God's kingdom is in ill repair and disarray, the true heroes of the kingdom cannot rest. Let others live in the constricting confines of church complacency, but the true heroes of the kingdom arise to the surface and prepare to make a difference. For 40 years, a carnal and spiritually callous king never concerned himself with the presence of God, but no sooner had David been coronated until he strayed in his scepter for a sword, shouting, Where is the Ark of God? Whether it was by casual conversation or by expedited dispatch, a message came to Nehemiah that the walls of the city of Jerusalem laid in ruins. When the king noticed the distress of his heart and inquired, Nehemiah had no other prerogative but to answer, Why not should my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my forefather's sepulchre, lie at waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? As God restores revival to the church in the end time, he's not going to be using the exposed new doctrine and the new gospel, but he's going to reach down and pick some stones that have been scorched at the time by fire of oppression and adversity. And like Sambalat, Satan will issue his challenge to the church. Will God revive the burnt stones? Our answer is a resounding yes, yes, yes. The thought of the day. Though broken, you're positioned for a revival. Beyond the bitter to better. We all think that we'd like to be like David when we read the first four verses. David said, you've lifted me up, you've healed me, you've kept me alive. He then encourages us to sing unto the Lord. But consider this, if you've been lifted up, you've had to be down. If you've been healed, you had to be sick to give praise to be kept alive. Your life must have been in danger. And then he says, you can sing unto the Lord. He kind of sums it all up in verse 5. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. To get to joy, you've got to go through weeping. To get to the morning... <laughs> You've got to go through the night. 
And irrespective of whatever I go through, my response is always going to be like Job. Though he say me, yet will I trust him. Don't be bitter, just get better. The thought of the day, to get to joy, you've got to go through weeping. The interest rate is too high. People borrow money from lending institutions that have a large amount of ready cash. These places give people an opportunity to buy something immediately that they need or desire. The bigger the cost of the interest, the easier it is to obtain a large amount of money for them. The wages of sin is debt, but people sin and are not struck by lightning. They continue in sin and find they do not pay. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11 reminds us, Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. But there is a payday coming. Jesus paid the price to get you out of debt caused by hell's high interest rates. You can consolidate all your sins and iniquities into one package and drop them off at Calvary. If you're making payments to hell for some foolish pleasure of sin, apply today to Heaven's Credit Bureau. Make an appeal to the blood of Jesus. There's a little song that the choir TRC sing. It says, I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I'm singing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. The thought of the day. Do your sins be as scarlet? He'll wash them white as snow. God bless you today. In Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. We make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.